Hi folks, welcome back. This is a lecture about the 20 most common errors that students make in their college level essays. Now some of these errors are easier to understand than others, but I'll try my best to make this as simple as possible and help you save lots and lots of points on your essays. Now this list of 20 errors was compiled by uh, Bob Connors and Andrea Lunsford, two of the uh, shining luminaries of the uh, composition world. And they did a study in which they looked at 21,000 different student essays and compiled this list uh, based on the errors that were the most frequent. So I think it's a very good idea to focus in on these. And uh, there, A lot of these are really simple and you can like I said, save yourself a, sometimes a whole letter grade, if not two letter grades, just by uh, following these rules. Okay, we'll start in the reverse order. Uh, so number 20 is the it's and it's confusion problem. And this one is very simple because uh, you all you have to do to see if it's going to be it's with an apostrophe or it's without the apostrophe is see if you can substitute it is or it has. Now if you don't have the apostrophe, that shows possession. And if you do, it's that contraction. So let's look at an example of a wrong one. Uh, it's not a problem that concerns me. Uh, so that is the possessive form. You need to put the apostrophe S because you'd say, it is not a problem that it concerns me. It's a serious problem that affects all of us. It is a serious problem. So you can hear what I'm doing there. It's been fun knowing you. That's one uh, where it's it has. It has been fun knowing you. So just remember, if you're not sure, see if you can put the it is or it has in there. The dog buried its bone behind the auger. Would you say the dog buried it is bone or it, it has bone? Of course not, so you don't need that apostrophe. The cat buried its feces in the litter box. Uh, again, you can't say it is or it has, so there's no apostrophe. Okay, number 19, the misplaced or dangling modifier. Now these are a little bit uh, trickier, but uh, simple enough, you just whatever you have is your modifying element. I need to put that next to the word that it modifies, and you also need to make sure the word is actually in the sentence. If you don't have it in there at all, that's called the dangling modifier. If it's just in the wrong place, it's called a misplaced. So here's an example of the dangling. Sipping margaritas, comma, the ducks swam gracefully across the lake. Now, are these ducks uh, kicking back with their cocktail glasses? I don't think so. So what you've done here is actually left out whatever is sipping margaritas. So we can fix that. Sipping margaritas, comma, we watched the ducks swim gracefully across the lake. So there we put the we in so you know who's sipping margaritas. We could also rewrite it. Uh, we sipped margaritas and watched the ducks swim gracefully across the lake. All right, number 18, the fused sentence. So this is independent clauses must be separated with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. And this will be related later on to the comma splice. Now what we have here though is just a fused or a run on. And uh, the coordinating conjunctions, that's a bit of uh, grammar terminology, but just remember fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Fanboys. If you can memorize that list, your life will be much easier. Okay, uh, here's some examples of fused sentences. Uh, wrong. The penguin moved to Wisconsin, his friend moved to Montana. So you see how those are just fused together there? That's uh, two separate sentences. They need something in between them. So the penguin moved to Mon uh, Minnesota, comma, but his friend moved to Montana. So you put the comma and the coordinating conjunction, but. Okay, number 17, the unnecessary commas with a restrictive element. And there's a, another partner to this one, but I guess this one's slightly less common. Uh, so the rule here is don't put commas around an element that restricts or defines the meaning of another part of the sentence. So that's a fairly technical rule, but uh, look at these examples, it'll be easier. So it's wrong to say, we went to the theater last night, comma, I saw the movie, comma, gravity, comma, in 3D. So what we're looking at is this gravity there, and do you need to put commas around it? Uh, you don't want to put commas around it because uh, the, it's defining the word movie. I saw the movie Gravity in 3D. Uh, if you don't put the word gravity in there, uh, then you don't know what movie it is. Uh, so that's an example of a restrictive element. You're restricting the meaning of that word movie to just the one called gravity. Okay. Number 16, and this is uh, definitely getting <laughs> trickier, but just bear with me. 
the pronoun and ante uh, antecedent disagreement problem. And there's uh, four different rules that governs this. Uh, the first one is that pronouns must match their antecedent, and that just means the word that they substitute for, in number, case, and gender. And then uh, the second rule is that indefinite pronouns have their own rules. So an indefinite pronoun, uh, there's many of them, but the most, commons, uh, most common ones are the ones that embody one or thing, like something, everybody, uh, someone. Now those are always singular. And this is the one that comes up all the time. So if you say everybody, that's a singular. So you'd say everybody is, and then it would have he or she and his or her uh, to go with it. Now, almost everyone, though, messes up and puts the word there for everybody. And we'll see that's uh, wrong. Okay, any, all, more, most, some, and none. Those are particularly tricky because they can be either singular or plural depending on what they go with. So if I said uh, all the apples, uh, that's plural. If I said all of the apple, that's singular. And that's just these, so it's a good idea, again, to memorize those. Unfortunately, there's no convenient uh, uh, acronym like fanboys for those. You just have to memorize them. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Uh, it's wrong to say everyone is born with their own unique fingerprints. So we can't have there. And if you're confused about this, just look at the word is. Remember that is goes with singular words. So it doesn't make sense to have is and then later on to say there, which is used for more than one thing. So you just want to keep it consistent. A little trick if you have this on a quiz, just look at the verb and see if it's singular or plural and make sure that the antecedent lines up with that. Everyone is born with his or her own unique fingerprints. Now that's correct, but it's also a little awkward to say his or her, he or she all the time. Uh, so easy fix is just to replace it with something like all babies. So all babies are born with their own unique fingerprints. Now if you have a compound subject or, or, or a predicate and you got the word or in there, uh, that's another special case. So if you have something or something, you have to make sure that the uh, amp, uh, verbs and the pronouns line up with whatever's closer. So let's take a look at some of these. The girls or the boy forgot their lunchbox on the bus. That's wrong because boy is closer to there uh, than girls. So you wouldn't say the, the boy and there. You'd say the boy forgot his lunchbox on the bus. Now if you flipped it around and had the boy or the girls, uh, then you could say there because girls is closer and that's there. Okay, the last rule for this is uh, the collective nouns. So if you have a collective noun, that just means something like jury, team, group, anything like that. Uh, now if it's singular or plural, it I mean it depends on whether or not those uh, that noun is acting as a one unit, as in the jury reached its verdict, or if you're talking about the individual members of the group uh, doing their own thing, in which case you'd use a uh, plural form. So the jury has reached their verdict is wrong because you only, they, they had to work together to reach just one verdict. So you'd say the jury has reached its verdict. If you had them arguing though, maybe you could say uh, the jury are arguing among themselves about the case. Uh, well then they, you, you know, you had to have more than one person to argue, right? Uh, so you could you know, think about it logically. Okay, number 15, the missing comma in a series. Now this is fortunately is very easy. Uh, just remember if you have more than, uh, if you have a little list of items going and you hit that third item, go ahead and put the comma there. Sometimes this is called the serial comma or the Oxford comma. Uh, so it's wrong to say, please buy mustard, mayo, lettuce, and pickles. So you notice how they left off the comma after lettuce there. Should be, please buy mustard, mayo, lettuce, and pickles. Now you will find people that disagree with you about this, including uh, some teachers. Uh, but, you know, the more common... The, the standard rule is to go ahead and put the comma there. It doesn't cost anything extra to put a comma, uh, so just go ahead and do it and you'll always be correct, at least in my book and most other English teachers. All right, number 14, the subject and verb disagreement. So remember, before we had the pronoun and antecedent agreement, so if you have the boy, uh, that goes with he. Um, same thing with subject and verbs. If you have uh, the boy is or the boy are, you know that has to go with is because it's singular. So the, uh, there's number in person to worry about here. Okay, so it's wrong to say the point of these lectures are to improve your scores on essays. 
Uh, so this is a little problem that you run into sometimes with a, a little phrase, a little prepositional phrase that comes between the subject and the verb. So the subject of that sentence is the point. The verb is are. So you wouldn't say the point are, you'd say the point is. So you just have to bracket out or ignore that prepositional phrase that comes in between of these lectures, and then you'll know which one to, uh, to use. All right, number 13, the wrong tense or verb form. And so again, this is a lot, there's a lot of irregularities, a lot of quirks in the English language you just have to memorize. But in general, verbs should match the time or order indicated by the context. And two, memorize and apply the correct forms for the irregular verbs. Most of the time, the regular verbs, you won't have any issues. It's just those sort of exceptions that cause confusion. So it's wrong to say, after you hear the beep, please recorded your message. You know, nobody's going to say that. Say, please record your message. Uh, same thing with uh, Stuart Hall was builded in 1932. Uh, most of us know that should actually be was built. Now this can be a problem if you uh, have learned English from a book or by taking classes because you may not have heard these enough just to <clears throat> have it memorized. So again, it's worthwhile just to refresh yourself every now and then on the irregular verb forms. Okay, number 12, the sentence fragment. And this is just what it sounds like. You've got it punctuated like a complete sentence, but it's not. Maybe it's missing a subject. Maybe it's missing a verb. Uh, maybe you've got a conjunction starting it. You know that a conjunction connects sentences, so you can't have it starting a sentence. So it's wrong to say, after I finished my homework. You know, it doesn't you sound like there's something missing there, right? So that should be a little clue. And another reason why you should always read your essays out loud, because you'll catch a lot of these errors that you wouldn't if you just looked at it. So after I finished my homework, take out the after. I finished my homework. That's correct. Uh, you could also say, after I finished my homework, comma, I went to bed. Okay, because the teacher offered bonus points. Again, uh, incomplete, a fragment. You need to say, the teacher offered bonus points. Or because the teacher offered bonus points, comma, I did something. All right, number 11, the unnecessary shift in pronoun. Now, this is usually caused by lack of proofreading, more than people that don't just don't understand the rule. Uh, but basically, you don't want to switch to, to you after you started off in third person. So don't start off by saying they, there, and then suddenly you use the word you instead. So here's a good example. When students are proofreading their work, you should read it aloud. You know, you see, it just suddenly shifted to you there. It should be when students are proofreading their work, they should read it aloud. So you see what I'm talking about. You know, this is some, some teachers will say never use you at all, in a, especially in a formal essay. And I would say uh, only use it if you really do want to talk to the reader instead of uh, other people in the sentence. So but more than likely you're not going to want to do that, so I would agree. Uh, just stay away from the word you, especially if you're writing a formal essay. Okay, number 10, the unnecessary shifts in tense. Uh, so this is uh, probably another proofreading error. Maybe you go back in and you change up a sentence or two in a paragraph, and then you don't reread the whole paragraph to make sure that it still works. If you uh, just put something in and don't go back and look, uh, you probably have this error. So if you start off in the past tense, keep it in the past. Same thing with all the other tenses. So it's wrong to say the snake hissed at the cat. The rat runs away in panic. So you start off in past and then suddenly switch to present tense. Looks a little strange. So you just say the snake hissed at the rat. The rat ran away in panic. Okay, number nine, the lovely missing or misplaced apostrophe. Apostrophes cause people all over the world to have a conniption fits, but it's a little complicated, but it's not that bad. Okay, so the general rule is you add apostrophe s to show possession. You know, if only it were that simple, but there are some exceptions. So if the word already ends in S, uh, then you just put the apostrophe at the end. Now if it's a name, though, uh, like Socrates, uh, then you still add the apostrophe S, Socrateses. Um, three, do not add an apostrophe to personal pronouns. So if it's something like hers, you know, this is yours, uh, you don't put the apostrophe there. Now see, these are all exceptions. You know, even the one with the name, you know, some people uh, don't like that extra apostrophe S on their name. So if they say just put the apostrophe, you know, that's it's sort of uh, their choice to do that. 
All right, number nine, missing or misplaced apostrophe examples. So wrong, what is your problem? So if you have you apostrophe re, that's a contraction for you are. What is you are problem? I think you are problem is you've got that apostrophe there. So it should just be what is your problem, no apostrophe. Mr. Jones' class is going on a field trip. We need to put the apostrophe s there. Mr. Jones's class is going on a field trip. All right, so number eight, the comma splice. Uh, this is a very common error indeed. Uh, all the way up to number eight. So this is, a, the rule is simply do not use a comma by itself to combine two sentences. So it's wrong to say, the elevator is broken. Take the stairs. Sounds okay, but if you listen carefully, you do need an extra word in there, something like, the elevator is broken, comma, so take the stairs. You could also put, make uh, two separate sentences. You could use the dash. Lots of different ways to fix it, but you can't just have the comma by itself. All right, number seven, the wrong or missing preposition. Now, this is another one of those uh, rules that you just have to memorize a list, basically. Uh, so look at the, the, most textbooks will have a list of prepositions and common errors that people make with them. Uh, some of the ones that I've listed here that I tend to see a lot in my own students' writing, beside and besides. So you'd say beside if you mean by the side of, like I, I, I will sit beside you. Um, but besides with an S if you mean in addition to. So I have three other problems besides this one. Uh, between, use that if you've only got two things, like let's just keep this between you and me. But you would say among if you've got more than two. So let's just keep this among the four of us. And then we have two, T-W-O is the number. Uh, I have two apples. T-O-O, -O, two means also or too much. I have too much on my plate or I like you too. And then T-O, the preposition form is used for everything else. So here's some wrong prepositions. We promise to keep the secret between the three of us. We just said you have to use among if you've got more than two, so that should be among. Uh, do you mind if I sit besides you? And that should be beside. So hopefully this isn't too tricky. All right, wrong or missing verb ending, up to number six. Now this, again, it happens when you revise. So you go back in, you change up some stuff earlier in your, earlier in your essay, and you might accidentally put the wrong verb in, this, in the slot. So for example, the painter apply the techniques she learned in Venice. Should be the painter applied the techniques she learned in Venice. So again, you have to be very mindful when you're revising to go back and proofread to make sure that you haven't I put the wrong verb ending on some of your verbs. All right, number five, the missing commas with non-restrictive elements. So you might remember the earlier error uh, where it was uh, the unnecessary comma. So this is just the opposite. So you put commas around an element if you don't need it there to restrict or define the meaning of another part. So for example, my birthstone, peridot, is a yellowish green gem. So you can only have one birthstone. So it should say, my birthstone, comma, peridot, comma, is a yellowish green gem. You know, same thing with anything. If it's obvious, if you said something like my oldest brother, and you put his name, uh, you would put commas around it because you can only have one oldest brother. Um, so that would make it non-restrictive. If, however, you, have, uh, you just said my brother, and you've got three brothers, well, then you need the name to know which brother you're talking about. So it would say, my brother Luke, or my brother David, no commas. All right, number four, the wrong word. <laughs> Again, uh, you just have to memorize a list of these. There's usually you can find these online all over the place. I got a couple that I notice a lot in student writing. Uh, a allusion, or with an A, allusion, that means you re refer to something. So if I said that is an allusion to Shakespeare. Uh, that, then you have illusion with an I, and that means you're in disguise. So it's a, a robot in disguise. Okay, and then stationary with an A versus stationary with an E. Uh, the stationary with an A means it's fixed in place. Well, that's a stationary antenna uh, versus stationary with an E, which would be uh, that's some really nice, uh, colorful stationary that you wrote the letter on. Okay, accept with an A versus accept with an E. So accept is uh, you know I accept that. 
Except means you're excluded. So I'll take everything except pickles. All right, affect with an A versus effect with the E. Uh, this is probably the most common of all these here. So affect means you influence something. So um, this policy will not affect me or uh, I was affected by your performance. Uh, then you have E, it means result, and it's a noun form. So I think about the, the special effects in a film. So you know that's a noun form. Or you could say uh, the effect of this policy will be that we can no longer smoke on campus. So you're using it as a noun versus as an object. If I say the policy does not affect you, that's using it as a verb, so it's a affect, A. If I say the effect of the policy, uh, that's a noun form, so you go with E. A little tricky. Okay, then we have then and than. So then with the E means time. So we, we will do the homework, then we will uh, go out. Versus than with the A, uh, which is a comparison. So you are taller than I am. All right, so some examples. My phone was less expensive than yours. It should be my phone was less expensive than yours. This remedy had no affect on me. It should be this remedy had no effect on me. Okay, moving along then. Number three, missing commas in a compound sentence. So if you have two sentences that you combine together, remember you need two things to do that. One, the comma. Two is the coordinating conjunction, a.k.a. the fanboys. So let's look at the example. The girl likes oatmeal, but her brother prefers toast. It's missing a comma. So the girl likes oatmeal, comma, but her bro uh, brother prefers toast. Now, if you're not sure about this, just look at the separate parts of the sentence and see, is that a complete sentence? Is that a complete sentence? Do you have a coordinated conjunction, one of the fanboys in between them? If so, you know you need to have the comma there as well. All right, number two, the vague pronoun reference. Now remember the pronoun, he, she, they, everybody, whatever it is. Uh, you need to make sure it's clear to the reader what that pronoun stands in for. What, what is it substituting for? So usually no problem. Uh, if you have he, it's, you know, people know to put the, the name there. But the thing that confuses you most often will be a demonstrative pronoun. So these are words like this, that, these, and those. And then uh, the relative pronouns, who, whom, whose, which, and that. So those are the ones that are, so you always, you know, double check. If you use a word like this or which or these, uh, go back in and look again. Make sure it's very clear what it goes with. So here's some examples of errors. Sarah, Julie, Dakota, and Winona arrived last night. She forgot her passport at home. So you see, you got all those girls there and you just say she. It's no, I know the reader has no idea who it was. So just take out she, put the name there. Uh, another error, the embargo shut down shops, raised inflation, and bankrupted businesses. This damaged the king's reputation. So again, we have a list of three different things, and then you just say this. It's not clear which of those items that refers to. So you can correct it by saying these events damaged the king's reputation, if you want to talk about all of them, or you could just mention the specific one. All right, then finally, the most common error of all. The missing commas after the introductory element. And it is so simple to fix. If you have something that comes in front of your main clause, you put a comma after it. Anything. It could be one word, could be a whole clause. So let's look at some examples. According to my watch, it is now 6 o'clock. So if you listen, if you read it out loud, you'll hear that there's a little gap in between there. According to my watch, it is now 6 o'clock. So when you hear that little gap, it should be a clue that you need to put something there. In this case, a comma. According to my watch, comma, it is now 6 o'clock. However, I agree that you make some good points. So if, again, if you read it out loud and listen, you will hear that there's a little pause, so you need to put a comma there. However, comma, I agree that you make some good points. All right, so those are the 20 most common errors. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, also, uh, keep in mind, if you didn't get some of the jargon, I have two earlier lectures on grammar where we go over, uh, you know, defining things like clauses and phrases and all that sort of thing. But anyway, if you do have questions about this lecture, feel uh, free to post them in the YouTube comments or back on Canvas. Have a good day.